If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Teacher Worlds 2020. We are continuing with our Sword and Shield coverage of the decks that have been doing really, really well. Um, I can hear a lot more echo in the room. I guess that's because there's <laughs> I decided to clean yesterday and there's a lot less clutter. So pardon me if the sound isn't great. But yeah, Seijin ADP is expected to be one of, if not the most popular and powerful decks of the new set. And this is a list, um, almost perfect team, that did really well over in Japan as well, just like the previous one. We have um, Seijin V with its fantastic ability, Intrepid Sword, where once you return, you may look at the top three cards of your deck and attach any number of metal energy you find there into onto this Pokemon, right? After you use its ability, your turn ends, so you have to be very careful when using it, but definitely compensates a little for uh, when you go second. Uh, I mean, when you go first and you can play a supporter, at least you get to draw those three extra cards. If you start with Jirachi, you also get to Stellarwish, so it's not all bad, especially if you get to accelerate energy since the very beginning. And then we have the Brave Blade attack, which deals 230 damage, and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So pretty solid attack for sure. Um, 230 is not as powerful to take down tag teams, but it is enough to take down other, um, other V Pokemon. And we do have ADP's Altered Creation GX. That's why I have the water energies right here the water energies and um by granting the 30 bonus damage to stage and v you actually get all the way up to 260 damage and then we do run the vitality band as you can see right there yeah right there <laughs> there um which increases your damage output by 10 damage. Now, this is relevant because Brave Blade dealing 230 plus the 30 from Alter Creation plus the 10 from Vitality Band, that is 270, which I feel continues to be the magical number. It one hit KOs um, Mew3, it one hit KOs Pikram, um, despite resistance. Well, I guess with the bonus damage from ADP, you already did that. Um, I don't know, it one hit KOs Reshisar. There's a bunch of things that you one hit KO um, with 270, and of course you get the bonus prize card. So why wouldn't you want to do that, right? Um, so yeah, you take a slower turn when using Alter Creation, but in exchange you get that extra prize and you get that bonus damage. Now supporting this deck, we have the four Jirachis, the one the DNA, the one Absol, and the Fione, so that we can make sure we switch things around fairly easily. There's only one copy of Great Catcher, so Fione and Great Catcher are the only ways we can manipulate what's active. Um, next up we have the four professors research, um, Professor Magnolia. As always, discarding your hand and drawing seven will be very, very good for any deck, especially this one, since you even benefit from having metal energy in the discard pile because you do play Metal Saucer. Now, metal Saucer is essentially Metal Patch, just like Dark Patch, just like Aqua Patch, you get to attach a metal energy from your discard pile onto one of your benched Pokemon. So super, super good right there. 
to have that as an option to power up multiple station Vs throughout the game. And then of course we have our two Marnies to disrupt our opponents. We have double Malo Lana, which is really, really cool because we are actually able to heal off any damage that Sejan V took. We also get to switch so that we can reset the Brave Blade attack and even get a Stella Wish off that way. Now we also have Cynthia Cabling to get back um, one of the supporters and also to have uh, drop potential off of tackles. We have Fava as well to get rid of pesky, um, pesky tool cards that might be annoying, especially opponents. Uh, opposing Sejan V's Metal Frying Pans you can get rid of that and then um, your damage output is immediately increased by 30. And in a Sejan V War where you alter creation and they didn't, you should have the advantage because you'll only need to knock out two Sejan Vs. Now we do have four Quick Ball as well. We only play basic Pokemon, so Quick Ball seems like a very easy card to add. And then we have the four Metal Saucers that I already mentioned, Triple Energy Spinner to make sure that we don't um, whiff energies at any point especially because we do need those waters for ADP, but also because you can actually Stella Wish for an Energy Spinner, but you can't Stella Wish for an Energy, so I really, really like that. Um, and on turn one, it's fantastic to just get all those Energies into your hand. Next up, we have the Tackles to get our ADPs and also our Tag Team Supporters. Double Switch to go with Malana and Jirachi, of course, and to reset the Brave Blade. Double Reset Stamp to attack our opponent's hand along with the Marnies, <clears throat> the one great catcher, one adventure bag as we do play a variety of tools including skateboards for the Jirachi, the vitality vent that we already talked about, and the big amulet increasing our HP by a further 30. So the big amulet is really really nice to attach to ADP because then you get all the way up to 310 damage and you're actually out of range of something like Flare Blitz from Mew3. Yeah, from a Welder Mew3 deck, which I don't expect those to be too, too popular, but it's definitely something um, cool to add. Or you can just make your Seijian V have all the way up to 250 HP, which once again, in the Seijian Mirrors, if they are playing Lucarnal Mel instead of ADP, then they will certainly never be able to one carry you as long as you have the big amulet. Now, Triple Power Plant will help in slowing down opponents' Pokemon opponent's attackers and opponent's setup by slowing down the Dene GX. Um, even though we play our own Dene GX, we don't really rely on it because we do have four Jirachis to help us um, navigate the matchups. Um, this is basically like, it's very reminiscent of ADP, like ADP Keldeo from the previous Cosmic Eclipse format. You have the slow ADP start, you rely on Jirachi, you will sometimes use the Dene, though probably not a lot. Um, and you have Power Plant, right? Instead of having Keldeo's Protection, you actually have a really powerful attacker in Station V, so might as well disrupt your opponent's attempts at setup with the Power Plants in play, plus Reset Stamp, that's always a very powerful play, especially against the Mew3 and possibly Marcargo GX decks that we might see um, in the meta. Now, one big glaring weakness that I see in this deck is exactly that, like, Usually, the metal decks will start playing metal frying pan in order to not only make your Sajian bulkier, but also to eliminate that fire weakness um, from the welder decks, which even though are less powerful now with the rule change and the fact that you can't welder on turn one, um, they will still be a thing, I imagine. Makaro GX and Reshizard, I'd imagine, will still be a thing. We will actually be taking a look at both of those decks in this um, Sword and Shield countdown that we're doing. But more importantly, um, those fire decks will also have ways to get rid of tool cards, right? So either um, Lysander Labs in order to eliminate the effect or their own Fabas to remove it. So in the end, if the fire decks are going to counter your counter to them, you can just not run them, increase the consistency of your deck and further disrupt with Power Plant. But the glaring fire weakness for this deck is definitely there. Since we have no Mel Frying Pan, no weakness card energy, no way in order to um, combat that. So this deck did make it very far in the Japanese tournament. It had a Genesect over the Absol, which I wasn't a big fan, that's why I added in the Absol. But um, overall, you could consider tweaking the energy perhaps a little bit, and you could consider um, adding a water type attacker, perhaps even a Keldeo GX to the deck. You just choose not to play the power plants and that would be fine. Um, but yeah, the glaring fire weakness is definitely, definitely there. 
And then we have a very healthy um, 9 and 3 energy count, which with our 3 energy spinners just becomes fantastic. We shouldn't be whipping energy um, at all, basically, unless you get some really random draws. Um, 9 and 3 plus 3 spinners should be more than enough to keep you afloat throughout the whole game, especially with Metal Saucers being in the deck. So you're not going to be missing energy attachments. You will be able to power up your station V constantly, and that is the whole point of the deck, right? So yeah, expect to see this deck very soon, as soon as um, Cubs start with Sword and Shield, but also in Australia and the Oceania International Championship. I am sure we will be seeing a bunch of these on stream. Not necessarily this list, but the combination of ADP plus Station. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. And make sure to tune in tomorrow for another Sword and Shield deck coverage. Bye-bye.